John Ken Show, John Cobell and Ken Shampo. It's KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Well, I just warmed John's heart when he came into the room. I said, yeah, last story is an execution story. All right. And it's a woman. They killed a woman in Texas. Didn't they just kill somebody in Texas like last week? They did. Yeah, right? There yeah. Was some guy we were talking the, the, about? Texas goes in streaks. I don't know what it is. Uh, there just seems to be a run of executions in a short period of time and then uh, nothing for a while. Well, her name is Suzanne Basso, age 59. The murder she committed was in 1998. Wow. Not bad, all things considered. 16 years later, she goes down. 16 years, because we, we have, have guys on death row from the 70s. Murders, yeah, right? yeah, twice as long. They've been sitting on death row compared to this woman. But she's, she's put out in 16 years. Yeah, she uh, killed 59-year-old Louis Buddy Musso, whose battered and lacerated body, washed with bleach and scoured with a wire brush, was found in a ditch outside of Houston. Apparently her ploy was to lure Musso... From New Jersey. She's originally from New York. She met him there at some point. She got him to come to Texas on the promise she was going to marry him. And this guy went for it? She took over his insurance policies and his Social Security benefits after that and then killed him. And she thought she was going to get away with this. She was going to turn over all the bene- all the benefits to herself. And then nobody would think, well, maybe she did it. Musso suffered several broken bones, a skull fracture, and 14 broken ribs. His back was covered with cigarette burns, and bruises were found all over his body. She became a suspect after reporting him missing. Following the discovery of his body, five others also were convicted, including Basso's son. But prosecutors only went after the death penalty against Suzanne because she was the ringleader. Nice family. Uh... She, uh, in the days leading up to the trial, her court appearances consisted of her claiming that she was blind, paralyzed, and she would uh, engage in speech mimicking a little girl. Yeah, the prosecutor at the time was Colleen Barnett. Uh, She was the former Harris County assistant DA. It was challenging, but I saw her for who she was. I was determined I was not going to let her get away with this. Her attorney, Winston Cochran, agreed or argued that she suffered from delusions and that they should have uh, done more with the law's governing governing competency. Her lawyers said that a degenerative disease left her paralyzed, but Basso, who used a wheelchair, actually blamed her paralysis on a jail beating years ago. No, so, so they had a conflicting stories. They had two different stories. The lawyer saying degenerative disease, and she goes, no, no, jail beating. Okay. Um, she apparently was a chronic liar at one point. She claimed that she was a triplet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do that. <laughs> and worked in the New York State Governor's Office and had a relationship with Nelson Rockefeller. She was originally from Albany and Schenectady around New York. So, Well, that's possible. But I don't think he got was. around. I don't think she he was, was the governor. I remember who, who died in, in the middle of, uh, of uh, sex with his mistress. That was the word that came out later, right? Yeah, yeah. He was having an affair with some right, but secretary, it was, I it think. Was, it was right in the middle. Had a heart attack. Yeah, and I think he was on top of her and then had the heart attack and just fell on her dead. And it's like, how do you, how do you, <laughs> how do you get that out? Um, Apparently, the prosecutor said Suzanne ran the show. She was the one in charge. She directed them. She wanted the money. She's the heinous killer. Among witnesses testifying... At Basso's punishment trial was her own daughter, who told of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse at the hands of her mother. Yeah. We'll tell you how this went down. She was pronounced dead at 6.26 p.m. Central Standard Time. This giant time, John, it took 11 minutes. But she snored. Yeah, it was a lethal dose of uh, pentobarbital. But it said she ha- she engaged in deep snoring. Now, is this cruel and inhuman? No, I don't think so. Well, we were told the snorting guy in Ohio that that was just uh, disgusting and unbelievably cruel because he was snorting. Now, what's the difference between a snort and a snore? It's Well, snoring sounds like you're in a deep sleep. You're just going off to rest. Why would that be a problem? It's not too far from snorting, though, and and snorting is very bad. And apparently the snoring uh, started out deep, and then it became more shallow and less audible and eventually stopped, and that was it, 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Now, I'm uh, fast. Can we have this then here? The penobarbital? 
Why don't we use it in California? We have such a big debate going on about the three drugs, the two drugs. Yeah. It looked like this worked pretty well tonight. You snore for 10 minutes and you're done. Yeah. Um, I'm fascinated by the killing, though. I mean, after he, she, she, you know, beat him to death, whatever she did, she washed his body with bleach and scoured it with a wire brush. Probably trying to get the, uh, the cause of death maybe off Isn't it. Isn't that weird? Trying to. Like, like she was scrubbing a, like a, a dirty plate? Yeah, she was cleaning the crime scene and the crime victim. <laughs> bleach and a wire brush. That is really, uh, bizarre. Yeah, well, no, he's already dead. I mean, just. What are you doing? By the way, a state judge ruled just last month that she has a history of making up stuff, uh, seeking attention, manipulating psychological tests. He had enough of her. So <laughs> she didn't, she got no luck with the lower federal court, state courts. And I guess they did their usual attempt to drive by the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, nobody answered the phone. Uh, this, she's only what? the 14th woman now, executed in the U.S. since now, the Supreme Court allowed capital punishment to resume in the 70s. Not too long ago, we, there was an execution. We were talking about how there's a Supreme Court justice who's assigned to the overnight shift. Right. In case there's an execution. Something comes in on and, the wire. And, and you wake up, you know, like Judge uh, Ruth Ginsburg or, or Scalia, right? And, yeah. And you, you say, hey, Judge, I got a client here. You got you to gotta spare him. And you got to make some kind of an argument. Now, what if, what if the judge doesn't answer the phone? Do they go along with the execution? Like if he doesn't issue a formal stay or a formal refusal? Or I does think the phone just you, rings well, and rings and rings? And it's not going to happen. The judge is well. you know, he's in the toilet. He's face down on the carpet. He had too much to drink. Then what do you do? They're well like aware he, of the possible pending appeals. They're not going to be. <laughs> is the judge answering? It's like he's not answering. Super Bowl's on. Get the hell out. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> All right, Tim Conway Jr. Show. Hey, hey appreciate that. Thanks, got fellas. Little TC on your mic ball. Well, there. Yeah, yeah, TC. TC. Well, you got to keep Top your cat. own, you know, because uh, a lot of people are uh, yeah, sick you don't around share. here. Yeah. Hey, CVS is going to stop selling uh, tobacco products, uh, which is great. But uh, <laughs> like you care. Yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> but uh, but how about uh, stop selling the Doritos and the fat food as well? I mean, I bet there are more people that die from obesity than cigarettes. Yeah, the they're country. trying to spin this that you know they do so much for preventive medicine and <laughs> well, wellness. It's a pharmacy, it's just... <laughs> so there's drugs, right? Right, but there's also yeah. Doritos and uh, all kinds of fat Doritos. foods there as well. Oh, the, 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 the CVS I go to it on Doritos has, has aisles and aisles of booze. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can yeah. buy booze at CVS 24 nah. hours a day. And, and you're not buying the high-end booze. You're buying the ones that are liver slices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a $4 you know, bucket of vodka. <laughs> I remember in high school, we'd buy BK whiskey. <laughs> like, who's puts BK whiskey? BK? Oh, yeah, it's really oh, bad. Oh, yeah. No, we used to get the yeah. real low-end gin. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and 20 years after I moved out of the house, I went to my uh, dad's closet, and he still had that bottle of BK whiskey. BK. <laughs> that, that I used to drink wow. with my friends. And like he wouldn't drink it, he wouldn't touch it. That thing that, that sat there for like a quarter century. Yeah, my dad used to put a black line where the the vodka right, was. The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just put see if you... water in there when you're done. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> Eventually, he's just drinking water. Uh, and also, this is really sad. But uh, you know, good luck, Charlie. The the show, the little girl Charlie is getting death threats. She's five years old. I don't know this show. Yeah, it's good oh. luck, Charlie. Why is Me, she uh, getting death threats? I don't know. There's Charlie? crazy people in this world. Yeah. She's five or six years old. Oh, it's it's unlike it's, Honey Boo. Is that Twitter thing again? People yeah. are using Twitter to send Twitter. death threats to exactly a five-year-old. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly oh, right. Boy. And Sochi, the, uh, the uh, locals are asked to give up their pillows for the athletes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. This is going to be the my great, dirty pillow. <laughs> the greatest Olympics ever. All right. I tell used to the honey have in the bee. That was classic. That yeah. was great, man. Yeah, the honey. 